welcome back to the channel family. Thanks for tuning in today. We are going to be taking a look at Isaiah chapter 32. Um, let's get straight into it. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the storm. As brooks of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken, and the heart of the rash shall understand. Knowledge. And the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile man shall no more be called noble, nor the churl said to be bountiful. For the vile man will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity, to practice hypocrisy, and to utter error against Yahovah, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and to cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the meek with lying words. Even when the needy speaketh right, but the noble deviseth noble things, and to noble things doth he stand. But the Nobel deviseth Nobel things, and to noble things doth he stand. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. In a year and some days shall be troubled ye. In a year and some days shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail. The ingathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Tremble. Be troubled, you careless ones. Strip you and make you bare. And gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall smite on the breasts in lamentation for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vineyards. Upon the land of my people shall come up thistles and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. For the palace shall be deserted. The multitude of the city shall be forsaken. Hill and watchtower shall be caves forever. A joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness become a fruitful field. And the fruitful field be counted for a forest. And judgment shall inhabit the wilderness. And righteousness dwell in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be shalom, peace, well-being. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. And it shall hail coming down on the forest and the city shall be low in a low place. Blessed art thou that soweth besides all waters that sendeth forth the feet of the ox and 
the ass. Blessed are ye that sow besides all waters, that send forth the feet, the ox, and the ass. Now, this is a glorious chapter for the listeners. Um, this is Isaiah 32. A king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. Christ Jesus, the Lord, doth rule and reign over all nations presently, beloved Hyrcanus. in righteousness and meekness and equity and justice and judgment over all mankind. And the bride, the Lamb's wife, the saints, the church, have largely ruled, friends, even in the face of idolatry, devilry, materialism, lust, greed, power and envy of governance. Uh, we still have clean running water for virtually everyone. Uh, in many countries, we have sewage, we have health systems, um, we have um, social services, um, we have civil services, um, you know, um, we, we, we have much, much blessing and that's all through Christ, the death of Christ uh, and the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and the, the work of his people, the church, all those things. The judiciary, the police service, the fire, the ambulance service, etc. They are all the work of the church. And that's what that verse says. Christ doth rule over all things. And his princes, his servants, his men and women, down the ages that have brought about these wonderful things in society, um, have, have brought these things in for peoples. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. So this is Isaiah 32, 2. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Well, the rock of ages, out of the freshly hewn rocky tomb, the rock rolled from the door and out he came, the guardian and saviour and preserver of all mankind. As the scripture saith, he that believeth on me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. There was a dam between God and man. And Christ, in atonement, has brought eternal life to mankind the dam is broken the life eternal doth flow to mortals through the blood of Jesus the water and the blood out of the spear pierced side of the dead Christ out of that spear pierced side is the assembly of the church none have been denied all the father has given the Son doth come to him and receive the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. Jesus said, now you are clean through the word I have spoken unto you. The word, the washing of the water by the word, the cleansing of the blood atonement, the threefold application of the blood, your hearts cleansed, God's heart satisfied and a place for thee to stand in God's presence forever, with joyous bliss and eternal rejoicing. A covert from the storm. Elijah was there hiding 
um, for his life. Elohayawa came to Elijah and said, what are you doing here? Go here, go there, do this, do that. Purpose. Without vision, the people perish. Moses was in the, put in the cleft of the rock, was able to see the hinder parts of Elohayawa, for no man shall see my face and live. Of course, the risen Christ has seen and does presently see the face of the Father. A hiding place from the wind. When Moses was in the cleft of the rock. Let, let's turn to that quickly, friends. I wonder if we can... Oh, model put Moses. Rock, that should give us several results, actually. Well, three results, look at this. Um, Isaiah and Numbers. Yes, you often... You often get um, dual accounts in Exodus and Numbers uh, of the life of Moses. Um, <clears throat> once you fetch water out of this rock, Moses lifted up his hand with, with his rod, he smote the rock twice. The water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also. Um, that is the work of the Father and the Son. Uh, it being the will of the Father and the Son, the crucifixion of Christ. Um, but of course, Moses was commanded to speak to the rock. Um, and because he didn't speak to the rock, he didn't get to go into the promised land. He was able to see it, but not go into it. Now, let me see. Here, we're struggling to find this now. Okay, let's have a look. I'm quite sure it's... Uh, let me just have a look, friends. Yeah, so Moses, uh, at the foot of the mountain, the whole of Mount Sinai smoked because Jehovah descended upon it. That's Exodus 19. And its smoke ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain shook greatly. The sound of the trumpet increased and became exceeding loud. Moses spoke, and Elohim answered him by a voice, and Jehovah came down on Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain, and Jehovah called to Moses, and Jehovah called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. That's a type of Christ in ascension. And Jehovah said to Moses, go down, testify to people that they break not through to Jehovah to gaze, and many of them perish. Yes, I think what it is, I'm in the King James Version there. If we quickly turn to that translation and pop in there that see what that comes up with no. how unusual Go with Elijah, see what that renders us from the results. Hmm. Not unusual again. Well, I'm quite sure I can find that depends out his first King Samuel King's Chronicles. Yes, uh, in 2 Kings 1, we have Elijah sitting on top of the mountain. 
And of course, the earthly representatives come to him to come down from the mountain. But if we go back a few chapters, here it is. So, First Kings nineteen, friends. So Jezebel is in pursuit of Elijah. Um, the wicked Ahab tells Jezebel everything that Elijah had done and how he had killed the prophets of the devil with the sword. Jezebel sends a messenger saying, right, so do the gods to me more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow at this time. So he arises and flees for his life. He's under the broom bush uh, in verse four. And he says, Yahweh, take my life, for I'm not better than my father's. He lay down and slept. An angel touched him and said, arise and eat. And when he awoke up, there was food and water. The angel of Yahweh came again and said, eat some more. You're going on a great journey. And he went on the strength of that food and liquid for 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb, Mount Horeb, the Mount of Elohim. For 40 days, 40 nights he didn't eat. And then he went and lodged in a cave. And it says the word of Jehovah came to him, the Devar HaYahweh. What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I've been very jealous for Yahweh, the God of armies. The children of Israel have forsake thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I am left, I alone, and they seek my life to take it away. He says, go forth and stand upon the mountain before Jehovah. And behold, Jehovah passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rock before Jehovah. Jehovah was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, Jehovah was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake of fire, Jehovah was not in the fire. And after the fire, a soft, gentle voice. And it came to pass when Eliyar heard it, that he wrapped his face in a mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, the voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for Jehovah, the God of armies, for the children of Israel have forsaken that covenant thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I am left, I alone, they seek to take my life, to take it away. And Jehovah says to him, go return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. The wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael, the king over Syria. And Yehu, the son of Nimshi, shall you anoint king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Evel Mihola, shalt thou anoint prophet in thy stead. Now, friends, so there he was feeling sorry for himself. And I'm sure my hearkeners can relate to that circumstances in life upon the earth, feelings, regret of the past few, the future anxiety in the present, wondering what's going on. Where's the will of God, the power of God, the mind and the sovereignty of God? Well, there's Elijah in a cave hiding. Uh, and uh, he's done everything right. But there he is. And the wicked Ahab and Jezebel, the most powerful two people, naturally speaking, in the world at that time, were after killing him. Jehovah Elohim appears to him. What are you doing here? Come on, purpose, purpose, purpose. Get up. Right? Go and anoint the new king of Syria. Go and anoint the new king of Israel. Go and anoint the new prophet. Wow. A trinity of commissions, very, very, very important commissions. And whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, the king of Syria, the king of Israel, Yehu, will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Yehu, Elisha will kill. Wow. So there he is hiding for his life. Uh, and he's about to be used by God to anoint uh, the three most powerful people in the world going forward. When Moses picked up that staff off the ground, 
it turns from a snake into a staff. Take up your position in Christ, friends. Endure hardship as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Persevere, endure. Fight the good fight. Contend earnestly for the faith once delivered to the saints. Yet I have left to myself 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that have not kissed him. So coming back to our text. Christ Jesus is your hiding place, friends. He was rent upon the tree for all of thee. Christ Jesus is the place where Elijah was hidden and Moses. A place of safety your refuge, your protector, your guardian, your king, your judge, your head, your governor. Now, this is Christ Jesus, verse two, friends. And of course, Elijah uh, was a hiding place and indeed was hidden from the wind, like the wind that destroyed the rocks, tore the mountain in pieces. Rivers of water in a dry place, a shadow of a great rock. Uh, Zechariah 6, the two mountains, the two mountains of brass. Uh, Daniel 2, the stone put out of the mountain without hands. Mount Horo, Mount Sinai, the mountain of Elohim, Mount Zion, Mount Calvary. Jehovah is the mountain. Uh, thou art all living stones. Christ became a quarry of men and devils in order that men and women may become living stones. <clears throat> Stone is immo immovable, immutable and impenetrable. The rock of ages is not moved, is impenetrable and unmovable and immutable. The features of a rock and yet water came out of the rock. And the mystery is blood came out of the rock which speaks of incarnation, it speaks of atonement, reconciliation. And just as, just as that first woman, and I suppose just as everyone that's ever walked this planet came out of that first woman, you could say that everyone on the planet, therefore, came out of the first man, Adam. And Adam, Adam, is described as the son of God. And then you have Christ in the tomb, out of the spear pierced side came the wife, the church, the congregation, the saints. And you have some wonderful um, promises here to the saints. This is verse three, the work of the Holy Spirit. The eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And at the end of Daniel, the righteous shall understand, but the wicked shall not understand anything. The eyes of those that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. In the first, uh, well, chapter two and chapter three of Revelation. Revelation is a book of at least eight books. There's a seven letters, the seven churches, uh, and then the rest of the book. And in those seven letters, you constantly have this expression. Uh, he, he that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies, to the congregations. Um, the eyes of them that see and see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. It's a wonderful promise. It just reminds me of 1 John 2.20, but ye have an anointing from the Holy One, and you need not that any man teach you. And also 1 John 2, 20, 27, not 1 John 2, 27, seven verses later, it's repeated. You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. So God 
dwelling in you there will be happiness. That is true Christianity. God dwelling in you and with you, Jesus said, John 14, 23. If any man love me, my father will love him and we will come to him and take up our abode with him. Now, the heart of the rash shall understand knowledge. The tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. To have the assurance of the understanding of the true knowledge of Elohim Yehovah is the blessing of the gospel. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples, and thou shalt know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It's a wonderful thing, the Holy Spirit giving men the capacity and the words to speak. Moses uh, was fearful. He said, how can I do it? How can I do it? He, he'd murdered a man and he had to go back into the land to, to set hundreds of thousands of men, women and children free from terrible bondage to the world, the flesh, the devil. How can I do it? How can I do it? Gideon hiding. Both these men were mighty, mighty men. There was David uh, taking food to his family. They were in the battle against Goliath. There was King Saul, Saul, uh, previous king to David, looking for two, uh, two donkeys for his father. He became king of Israel. There was Moses uh, hiding for his life from Egypt after he'd killed the man. Uh, and many others throughout history. Elohim Yahweh, the ways are higher than men's ways, the thoughts higher than men's thoughts. This is a great chapter, is this, friends? A very, very great chapter. I'd certainly commend you to reread and study this scripture yourselves, the power of the Holy Spirit, friends. Great promises. It really is the gospel, uh, the gospel of Isaiah. Now, the heart of the rash shall understand knowledge. The tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. Well, that's very much the days we live in now, where vile persons are said to be helpful and kind, and churlish men are said to be bountiful. Oh, look at his house. Look at their house. Look at their car. Oh, look at his wife and his children. Oh, oh, he's got two cars. What a lovely house. But inwardly, they are like dead men, full of sin and lust and pride and envy and arrogance and devilry. Very much the day we live in now, churlish men. Churl, a churl, friends, or some of my listeners may not be familiar with the English language properly. A churl, uh, as I'm sure many of my listeners know, is, is not a good person. You do have a churl in scripture, Nabal the churl, that didn't help David. Um, his wife was Abigail, who later became David's wife, Abigail. Nabal the churl was a foolish man, harsh and arrogant, like a lot of men are. Harsh and arrogant and self-centered and proud. That, that's what the churl is. And many men like that are said to be bountiful. Such is the strong delusion. Vile peoples will increasingly speak villainy and people will know who are the vile peoples 
vile people will be known for their vileness, friends. Their hearts will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the law. Friends, you can hear it in people's voices. Listen carefully. You can hear it in their voices. Vile persons speak villainy. Their hearts work iniquity to practice hypocrisy, to utter error against the law. Such persons make empty the soul of the hungry and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. So it tells you, friends, and that's verse six. See, so that, that'll be a deep revelation about humankind. Persons that do not love, honor, and serve his majesty, Elohai Yehovah, and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, through the finished work of Christ, in death, burial, resurrection, ascension, atonement, expiation, and deliverance, uh, in thought, word, and deed. Well, friends, they are persons that speak villainy. Their hearts work iniquity. They practice hypocrisy and they utter error against the Lord. Oh, you can't say that. We've got to be nice to everybody. Well, that's how it is. That's how it is. It's the principle of salvation and the principle of reprobation. The mystery of God and Christ the mystery of holiness, righteousness, faithfulness and truth in Christ and in the saints through the virtue of the divine nature. And then the mystery of reprobation, where the opposite of the character nature and attributes eternal of Elohai Yehovah is manifested in the sinners. Uh, and that is the principle of reprobation, the mystery of iniquity, the character and nature of the doom deluded dragons, the unseen, deceased, disembodied, uh, doomed spirits. Now, it tells you there, friends, that those that do not gather with Christ scatter. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. So that tells you, friends, another spiritual principle that persons that do not love the truth, walk in the truth, think and speak the truth, right? Their instruments are evil. Somehow they work against the greater good. They work against mankind. Uh, they work against righteousness and holiness and truth. So it's not just the case, well, we know poor Jack. It's just how he is, you know. He's a nice chap, really. No, 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 no. Poor old Jack. If he's churlish and wicked and vile and villainous, uh, then that will be the effect he has upon the earth, friends. Let's have it right. Mortals that follow Christ are seeking immortality, purity, holiness, and blessing for others but those that are not are not you know and that's the effect you you can only get a lemon from a lemon tree or an orange from an orange tree or an apple from an apple tree you'll 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 never get a lime from a lemon tree or a pear from an orange tree it just doesn't work like that good fruit comes from good men bad fruit comes from bad men By a man's fruit, you shall know him. They stand to noble things. The noble deviseth noble things, and to noble things doth he stand. If you know Bell, if you know beauty, if you know Christ Jesus, the beauty, divine. Beautiful beyond description, his goodness so great men can't understand it. The 
goodliness, kingliness, and lordliness of Jesus Christ. No bell, no bell, no beauty, no Christ, and have light, love, and loving kindness for other spirits. The noble deviseth noble things, and to noble things doth he stand. It's a beautiful memory verse. And then you have a warning uh, against careless women in four verses from nine to 12. Careless women, careless daughters, not listening to the word of God. They've got to give ear to the word of God. The appeal goes out to careless women, careless daughters, foppish, feckless, flip floppers. But they may be established in the truth that they may love Christ and honor Christ. Well, many of them don't and won't, so they will tremble. Tremble, you women that are at ease. Be troubled, you careless ones. Strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth on your loins. They shall smite on the breasts in lamentation for the pleasant fields for the fruitful vineyards. Upon the land of my people shall come up thistles and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. The palace shall be deserted. The multitude of the city shall be forsook. Hill and watchtower shall be caves forever. The joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. Well, friends, that speaks of, of humanity under the curse. A lot of men are simply wild asses. I won't give you the modern American vernacular, but I'm sure you can imagine wild asses. Um, and then you have a pasture of flocks that speaks of persons that have the meekness of a lamb, the gentleness of a lamb. And Elohai Yahweh has his assembly. Christ has his church, his wife, his bride. A pasture of flocks. The divine nature revealed through mortals is Christianity. True Christianity is simply this. The divine nature flowing through men and women by way of the finished work of Jesus Christ. That is Christianity. Judgment shall inhabit the wilderness and righteousness dwell in the fruitful field. In the English, friends, we're prone to think of judgment as being negative, but judgment is not negative. It simply means what's right and proper and just and good and true. It is judgment that the believers in Christ are happy. It is judgment that men upon the earth in time have clean water, safety, sewage and food and shelter. It is judgment. Judgment is a wonderful thing. Righteousness will live in the fruitful field. It's very interesting, verse 16. Of course, uh, it's a very revelatory verse, being, being uh, the verse that it is. Judgment shall inhabit the wilderness. So what's right and proper and good and true will inhabit the wilderness. But righteousness live in the fruitful field. It's very interesting. So it speaks of uh, the earth is in view. Uh, and you have the wheat and the tares, the wicked and the just, the righteous and the unrighteous, the holy and the unholy, the goodly and the ungoodly. Um, to be goodly, to be holy, to be kind, to be faithful, to be true. It tells you that, that the finished work of Christ has made it so that all mankind has blessing. You know, the sun rises on the just and the unjust. Um, clean running water, um, safety and security generally, um, free food, in, in, well, particularly in, in Britain, every human has the right to free housing, warmth, furniture and food every day of their lives and free, completely free healthcare, um, police, fire, uh, an ambulance, free ambulance service, free medicine, uh, uh, bin collection, 
trash collection, if you're listening from America, things like this, clean streets, um, these things are, are free, completely free in Great Britain and many other countries. Uh, and so in that respect, judgment inhabits the wilderness. So although many of the men and women that enjoy those privileges are not in Christ, because of Christ and because of the congregation, those things are available for everybody. However, it says righteousness dwells in the fruitful field. Uh, that is the redeemed, the saints, Christ, uh, bought the treasure in the field, the pearl of great price. Righteousness dwells in the saints, Christ in the midst of you, in the midst of all of you. He assuredly is. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. Shalom is that word. The work of righteousness shall be shalom, which is well-being. And the effect of this righteousness will be quietness and assurance forever. So this is millennial conditions once again. Uh, in this chapter 32 of Isaiah. My people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. The wicked spirit will be removed from off the earth in the bottomless abyss. For a thousand years of peace and blessing throughout this orb. Now, So a wonderful, wonderful verse, friends. Uh, in returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your trust. Isaiah 30, verse 15. This is not dissimilar. The work of righteousness shall be peace. The effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. My people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. It shall hail coming down on the forest, and the city shall be low in a low place. Now, it's very interesting, this phrase, the city. Um, wherever men have gathered together, traditionally, friends, that's why a lot of people like to live in the countryside. Wherever there is city, there is commerce. Wherever there is commerce, there is often oppression. Wherever there is oppression, there is fear. Wherever there is fear, men and women feel they have to conform to the devil and the prevailing circumstances, the world. Um, and so you get keeping up with the Joneses. You get the desire to impress and to show that you're complying, and that you're part of society because you, you wear the fancy clothes and you agree that you must have certain living standards in order to be cool and hip and acceptable. Um, and so the soci soci societal culture in these places, in, in cities and towns, is often very different than, than in the countryside. Uh, and so therefore the city upon the earth, uh, involving trade, uh, and currency, uh, and, you know, the, the things that, that, that come from where those things exist and the systems of men around those things can often create a place of oppression and fear and conformity to the world, the flesh of the devil and pride and lust and arrogance and sensuality. And so therefore the city in scripture is not often spoken of as being a good place. Uh, indeed, what, what's in view is Jerusalem, the city of the great king. Uh, Scripture calls Jerusalem spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah, where the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected and will physically rule for a thousand earth years over all flesh. Christ Jesus has power to subjugate all flesh to himself, beloved here, So level ground around the cross, friends. Now, this is one of my favorite verses in scripture, beloved Hyrcanus, Isaiah 30, verse 20. 30, 20. 
Blessed are ye that soweth besides all waters, that send forth the feet of the ox and the ass. No. Well, an ox would not be used to transport food and an ass would not usually be used to pull a plow. So an ass would be for transportation, but an ox would be for plowing, you see? And so if you're a person, friends, that knows how to deal with things that uh, produce, involved in the production of something, and if you're persons that know how to deal with things that are involved in the distribution of things, um, then that means that you're very likely persons that are able to improvise and survive and share the good news of a glorious liberty, wondrous blessing, loving kindness, light, and life eternal. That you're able to declare the word in season and out of season. Blessed are ye that sow besides all waters. In any circumstance, friends, the Holy Spirit is able to give you a word to comfort, assure, guide and teach those around you. Friends, there's always somebody to help. Stay in the scriptures. Stay in the truth. Walk in the light as he is in the light and the blood of Jesus, his son, will cleanse you from all sin. Once again, beloved Hyrcanus, it's been a pleasure and a privilege to share with you from this chapter. Please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell. Please feel free to get involved in the conversation or wherever you see this broadcast posted. Um, and until next time, may the face of Elohai Yehovah shine upon you, uh, give you peace in every way. Uh, thou shalt see the king in his beauty. Uh, thou shalt all honour and serve his majesty, Elohai Yahuwah. You will all honour, serve and obey Yahuwah, friends. All flesh subjected. Thou shalt see the king in his beauty. Beauty beyond description. Majesty. You know, friends, I occasionally uh, check out a chap in America, a lovely chap. I think they call him, I think he's called Ask Cliff. He goes onto campuses and engages in very, very bright conversation with men and women on any topic. Cliff Netchley, I think his name is, Ask Cliff, one word, on YouTube, and uh, very astute, knowledgeable. Um, however, I... Uh, not that I watch for iniquity, friends, don't misunderstand me, but the topic is a very interesting one. Has the Lord God Almighty walked upon the earth? And, and he said, the Lord God Almighty has not walked upon the earth. Well, that's not true. The Lord God Almighty walks upon this earth right now in all of his children. That is the gospel. That's how you're delivered. There's not a hand or a foot moves upon this planet without the Lord God omnipotent, friends. How do you think you're all alive? You're all alive by the Lord God Almighty walking in you and with you, keeping you safe. If it was up to the devil, you'd all be dead. It's the Lord God Almighty that's keeping you all alive, friends. Now, the Lord God Almighty walked in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden. And this lovely, lovely brother Cliff said, the Lord God Almighty has never walked on the earth, but the Lord Jesus Christ has. Well, they're both the same thing. That's the mystery of incarnation, friends. Elohim, Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord God, the Father, the Lord God, the Son. The scripture says that unto the Son, the Father has said, thy throne, O God, endureth forever and ever. For the scepter of uprightness is the scepter of thy kingdom. For thou hast loved righteousness 
created lawlessness. Therefore God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. That's Abraham and Isaac. Abraham, father of a multitude. Isaac means laughter. The son of God has great joy. The joy that was set before him. For that reason, he endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of his majesty, the Father. Three in one and one in three. Lover, king, and judiciary. Over all, through all, and in you all. This is the reality on earth, friends. The answer of the tongue is from Yahweh. Christ, the word of God, is the life in every living creature right now. The Lord of the dead and the Lord of the living is the Lord Jesus Christ. As regards the Father, he says that God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Christ is the Lord of the living and the dead. The keeper of all the souls that have ever lived upon this earth, friends. Christ is all souls. He is the good sheep herd. Literally, the sheep herd. Christ is the sheep herd. Every man, woman, and child upon this planet right now. Christ fills heaven and earth right now. This is true Christianity, friends. Christ Jesus is every man, woman, and child on this planet right now. It's everyone except the devils. The devils are doomed and deluded and damned. And they know it. Their time is short. Stay in the scriptures, friends. Stay in the truth. Walk in the light. And Elohai Yahweh be with you and give you and your families peace, preservation, protection, and providence. Trust, obey, honor, and serve. Christ Jesus is the life in all of thee, and all of thee eternally. Shalom, shalom, family. Until next time.